What's up, YouTube? It's time for a review of the new Pelorian record, Obsidian Arc, out this past Friday, March 10th. So, sadly, last spring, the Metal World was struck a pretty big blow when Agaloc, who will no doubt go down as one of the most beloved and most significant American extreme metal acts ever to do it, announced their breakup. It was a confusing and kind of ugly breakup in terms of what was said in the press and the, the whole he said, she said dance, but in the following months, the silver lining started to form a little bit when two fresh new musical projects materialized from the split. So first, Agaloc minus frontman John Hom, so three quarters of the band, announced a new project called Karata with the former frontman of Giant Squid. And then later, John Hom announced Pelorian with Stephen Parker and Trevor Matthews, two fellow members of the Oregon Underground. And Pelorian are the first to hit us with a new release. It's called Obsidian Arc. And I'm going to put this as delicately as possible because I know how near and dear to the hearts of many Agaloc were. I mean, me too. I talk about the mantle here. I'm no longer upset about Agaloc's breakup. I never thought I would say that, but this album is my favorite metal album of 2017 thus far. Although I was perfectly comfortable categorizing Agaloc as a black metal band in the general sense, a lot of purists and a lot of extreme metal aficionados weren't comfortable and liked to slap all kinds of different labels on that band, whether it was folk metal or post metal or blackened doom metal is another one I heard. But with Pelorian and with this record Obsidian Arc, John Hom and his two cohorts have made an album that is unmistakably black metal through and through. With the opening track on this album, By the Light of a Black Sun, while things do kick off with some mid-paced acoustic and electric guitar layering, which of course the incorporation of folky and acoustic instrumentation is a, an Agaloc trademark, the acoustic guitar here quickly proves to be more of an accessory as it gives way to pummeling drums and epic harmonized tremolo guitars and gremlin vocals. And that acoustic guitar does emerge periodically just to add some texture, but this song at its core is melodic black metal at its finest. And a few minutes into this track, things take an incredibly bleak, grim turn for what's essentially the chorus section, which begins at about the 3 minute and 15 second mark if you want to follow along, where the listener is just overwhelmed with these walls of dreary, desolate chords. And just personally, as this despairing soundscape is washing over me, I can't help but picture wilting flowers and, and a bright sunny sky that slowly turns into a dismal abyss of, of clouds. It just makes you feel this sense of dread. And what's cool is that unlike a lot of structureless black metal, this chorus section repeats. So the second time it comes around, I always find myself shrieking along to that lyric, I've been gilded by the light of a black sun, which to me is just so dark and so powerful. And for the past few days, this whole section has been constantly stuck in my head and it's become like this depressing, heavy thing that I carry around with me. But what's wonderful is that emotionally, this record isn't just bleak like that all the way through. Pelorian really take you through the spectrum of discontent across these seven tracks. The next song, Arcane Divinity, it has more of like a creepy, ominous vibe, whether it's the doomy chug of the song's intro, or it's those frightening whisper vocals that come in halfway through the track, which, by the way, are executed fantastically because it is so easy to make whisper vocals sound corny, especially in black metal. Then a song like Forged Iron Crucible is just downright mean and aggressive much of the time, while the closing track, Dark as a River of Man, takes us back to more of that somber but oddly serene mood that a lot of Agalox music induced, particularly on the mantle and Ashes Against the Grain. And to achieve these various moods, Pelorian employ a nice variety of black metal related sounds, which makes this album a real well-rounded listening experience, not just emotionally, but musically as well. These songs do not blend together in the slightest. They all have factors that distinguish them. Really, this album is painted with all the same colors, but you get every shade. Like the intro to the song Vestige of Thorns clearly pays direct homage to early 90s Norwegian black metal and could easily fit on like one of those first four Burzum records. While a song like Forged Iron Crucible is more straight ahead modern black metal and wouldn't be too out of place on Immortals Sons of Northern Darkness or maybe a Dark Funeral record. And of course there's the closing track Dark as the River of Man that I already mentioned which is not only the biggest departure on here but it's the most Agaloc of any of these songs. It really has a gloomy post-metal vibe to it. It makes use of John Hom's cold, clean singing, as well as a lot of clean guitars and some groaning, distorted leads on top. It really, it'll be pretty familiar to Agaloc fans. And not surprisingly, 
it's been mentioned on Polarian's Bandcamp as a favorite, probably most often out of any of these tracks. But style shifting aside, I just love these songs. I love the arrangements. I love how on a track like Forged Iron Crucible, the band will allow a refrain to sort of shine through. This part I'm talking about first appears at 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Like, those chords are so irresistible that they really are like a hook in a sense. And I enjoy when black metal musicians can sort of embrace a catchy, repetitious part like that. Like I said before, unlike Agaloc, acoustic guitars don't ever really get center stage, but they are there. And particularly on a song like Vestige of Thorns, they're used as sort of a textural layer to, to deepen the arrangement. I love how on this song, the acoustic guitars kind of pop in and pop out when they're called upon. Like, the song could easily exist without them, but they add a lot. I think this record is wonderfully produced. It definitely has an insular black metal shell to it, but the mix does every instrument justice, so it strikes this beautiful balance between being still sort of harsh sounding, but never sacrificing any intelligibility in terms of what's going on. Obsidian Arc is just everything I look for in black metal and everything that initially seduced me about the genre. It has tons of emotion and tons of heart, although that heart is clearly dark and blackened. It's fantastically written, it's thoughtfully arranged, and I cannot recommend it enough to both black metal fans and to non-black metal fans because it's just that good. Obsidian Arc, it's a 9.5 out of 10 for me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I'll see you guys soon.